Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Greg Kimball, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Sergeant Stephen Borg. We warmly welcome the family of Flying Officer Jack Bonfield Faviel, whose story will be told shortly. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During the ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family, visitors and students on behalf of the following schools from Queensland. Wallambilla State School, St Agatha's Primary School Clayfield, and St Oliver Plunkett Primary School, Cannon Hill. Please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Students, you may be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths of floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Flying Officer Jack Bonfield Favio. Jack Favio was born in 1915, one of three children of Horace and Ida Favio of Bonville near Coffs Harbour on the New South Wales mid-north coast. Favio was a, as a lawyer in civilian life and spent six years at Remington & Co in Sydney as an article clerk before becoming a solicitor for the New South Wales Supreme Court. Residing at Cremorne, he also spent time in the Citizens Military Forces, parading part-time with the 7th Field Brigade. Favial enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force in March 1941 and carried out aircrew training as a pilot under the auspices of the Empire Air Training Scheme. After initial training at Bradfield Park, he carried out elementary flight training in Tiger Moths at Mascot before embarking for Canada. Favial's postings after leaving Australia highlight the truly multinational effort that went into training British and Commonwealth airmen under the Empire Air Training Scheme, as well as the global nature of the Second World War. In Canada, Favio flew Avro Ansons, Ansons at the Service Flight Training School at Fort McLeod in Alberta, after which he was attached to the Royal Air Force and posted to the Abu Sayyid airfield near Port Said in Egypt. Favio spent time at an operational training unit at Nuk Nakuru in Kenya, where he converted to Baltimore's, Blenheim's and Lesenders and in December 1942 was posted to number 52 squadron RAF at Habania, which carried out survey work over Iraq in Blenheims and Baltimore's. In April 1943, he was posted to number 38 squadron RAF at Fayyid in Egypt and flew mine lane, reconnaissance and anti-submarine sorties in Vickers Wellingtons. Fabiel's postings to the Western Desert had given him a wealth of operational experience in a variety of aircraft. A skilled and experienced pilot, he spent time instructing at number 203 maintenance group at RAF Albala before returning to Australia in July 1944 for operational service in the Royal Australian Air Force. After leaving and passing through a number of personnel depots, Favial was promoted to flying officer and was posted to an operational training unit in Tokemul in southern New South Wales, where he accumulated hours flying B-24 Liberator heavy bombers. With the war against Japan now reaching its critical stages, it was clear that Favial would soon be posted to an operational squadron operating in the Pacific. He married Kathleen Milne in Sydney in May 1945, and later that month was posted to number 21 squadron RAF, then based at Moratai Island off Papua. A heavy bomber unit equipped with liberators, number 21 squadron was at that time striking at Japanese targets throughout Indonesia in support of allied ground operations at Tarakan and Balipapan in Borneo. Favio's first cousin, Flying Officer Kenneth Hansen, was also a pilot at Number 21 Squadron at the time. Several weeks after joining the squadron, Favio was among the nine Australian airmen on board Liberator A-72-66, which took off, took off from Moratai on the morning of the 31st of July, 1945 to attack Japanese anti-aircraft positions at Lolobata in the Halmahera Islands. The weather encountered during the flight was generally poor, with low clouds and heavy rain, with the other participating aircraft receiving no word or seeing anything of Favial's aircraft during the operation. Despite extensive searches over the following days, interviews with native villagers, and an examination of Japanese records after the war, 
the whereabouts of A7266 was never officially determined, and all crew on board were subsequently listed as having been killed in action. Fabio's cousin, Flying Officer Hansen, had been killed just four days earlier. At 29 at the time, sorry, age 29 at the time, Jack Fabio's final resting place remains unknown. And as such, his name is recorded on a memorial at Ambon War Cemetery in Indonesia. His name is also listed on the Roll of Honor, honor on my left, among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed beside the pool of reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Flying Officer Jack Fabiol who gave his life for us, for our freedoms and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they'll be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening.